Well, hi everybody, it's Sandy Allnock, artist and paper crafter here on YouTube. And today I'm gonna to be making some watercolor hummingbird cards and it's gonna be a set of thank you cards because I send a lot of thank you cards. And it's in celebration of Pretty Pink Posh's fourth birthday. Congratulations, Paulina, on making it to four years and make sure you go on the hop and see all the stuff and you know there's always goodies to be had. And I'm gonna be using some Tombow markers and doing some watercolor to make these really pretty simple cards using the new Hummingbird Thanks stamp set. Look at these beautiful, beautiful birds. They're gonna be fun to color in a lot of different mediums. And I'm gonna do them with my Tombows. I have them in the mist, Mini Misty because the Mini Misty is going to help me to be able to re-stamp if I don't get things in the right place or if I want to add more color to something. I've done this technique with other stamps before and I have missed doing it so I thought I'd do it again here. Because hummingbirds are such beautiful bright colors and watercolor markers can give you really vibrant, vibrant color. The thanks is already stamped onto the watercolor paper that I have, and I'm using some uh, cold press arches watercolor paper. You can use a lot of different kinds of watercolor paper to do this kind of a technique. But I have four colors. The colors are going to be listed in the doobly-doo down below, and I'm just kind of randomly throwing some color onto the stamp. If you're going to use light colors, then put them on first and make sure you scribble off if you end up getting any other color marker so you don't contaminate your pens. But you can kind of make them touch and make them go over each other as long as you clean off your marker. And then when you get your brush out to start doing the moving around of the color, it's going to be a lot of fun to see what happens with that color. I'm using a number eight brush and it's a round brush by the Silver Brush Company in their black velvet line. My very favorite of the watercolor brushes out there. I like that they hold a good amount of water when I want them to and they also have a good point to them. So even though this is a number eight, which seems kind of large to some folks, even on a stamp like this, I can get that thing to point and get into some of those little wing tips on the, the bird's wings. And I'm rinsing my brush periodically as I'm going to change colors. If I don't want to contaminate one color with another and I want that blue to be a little on the brighter side, make sure I wash my brush a little bit so that I don't drag color over there because this will pick up a lot of this color. The Tombow markers are quite intense and they'll contaminate each other. One of the things to remember when you're doing something like this with a lot of colors is that yellow, blue, and red together make brown. So if you start getting too much of them together, you may end up with something brown, and that would not be good. And what I did just there while I was yammering, I re-stamped the eyeball so that I could make it a little stronger and a little bit on the beak. And I'll do that on each one of them because I liked how that looked. I liked having that much stronger eye, and it drew your attention to it. This little guy wanted to have a little bit more yellow on, so I'm going to try to get more of the yellow color onto my my little birdie because you know yellow is the best color <laughs> that's how i roll get it stamped and this one i love how his little feathers on his tail just kind of curve forward which is pretty fun and here i noticed i had missed stamping his eye hadn't gotten any color in there so i can re-stamp when i'm using the mini misty there's also a full-size misty and i use both of them depending on what i'm doing and how large a space i need and here on these, it's helpful to do the watercoloring right in the misty, because then if you need to stamp something over top, you can do that without having to reline things up. And if you move that paper, technically, if you have it all lined up in the corner, you should be able to take it out and then put it back in. But I find sometimes that doesn't work. So it's a little bit better if I can just do the watercoloring while it's in the misty and, and work in there instead. When you're watercoloring these, you can have the color go above the line that's been stamped, or you can pull it down below. You can smoosh it around in a lot of different ways, and I'll show you a way to use some color that's been put onto a block in a little bit, and you can add extra color to it. And then you can also stamp right over top of what you've already done. Now know that if it's soaking wet, if you have a puddle there, you don't want to re-stamp on top, because then it's just going to splooge. But if it's just damp and not soaking wet, then you can stamp right over top. 
So this one I'm going to add a little bit more on the pinky side, a little, little yellow and pink here. And I, these are really fun and easy to do. And they're even something that if you're kind of doing things with your kids at home and they want to learn how to watercolor, this is an easy way for them to watercolor in a controlled fashion. And most kids don't need controlled fashions, but if, if you have one of those young ones that doesn't want to just get totally free with it, and I know there are some kids like that. And this is a great way to be able to make something that looks like a picture of something. They can use a stamp and use markers with it because then they don't have to get the whole, how do I mix paint and all that sort of thing. And it's a really easy way to just pull in a little tiny bit of color. You can also look up the birds, on, look up hummingbirds online and see what kind of colors that people use with them and um, well, not color people what colors God uses with them when he makes hummingbirds how about that but look how beautiful it looks when you add those dark colors to just a few spots on these little hummingbirds so I wanted to add a little something to the cards they seemed a little bit overly plain so I'm gonna make a little deckled edge but it's deckled watercolor instead of tearing the paper and I'm painting with the brush on the side. I'm using the side of the brush, not painting with the front of it, so I can get that really sort of scrunchy, dry brush looking edge. And with having a bunch of the color scribbled onto a block, or you can scribble it on a CD cover or anything plastic that you can use, then I can create all different kinds of beautiful colors that match whatever colors I used in the bird. And these can get quite addictive to make if you start finding an image that works really great, like these beautiful birds. You might make a whole lot of them and have lots of thank you cards in your stash ready to go next time you need one. So there are my beautiful cards all set and ready to go. I hope you'll join the rest of the blog hop and go see what everybody else has been making. There's some other cute stamps that are in the release that's out right now. And I hope you enjoy the hop. And I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, click the like button. Make sure you're subscribed. And I will see you in my next video. Have a really great day. Bye-bye.